Applying for Social Security Disability is actually the next logical step. What I typically tell individuals is, if you're thinking about applying for short-term and long-term disability, remember that the programs work a little differently in Social Security. Most times what short-term disability and long-term disability is designed to do is basically just like you see in those AFLAC commercials. They're designed to provide you with financial assistance during that time period when you're not able to work. And it's great from a standpoint of giving you a financial resource that you didn't have. It usually is substantially or modestly less than what you're getting from when you were working. But more importantly, it is providing you a measure of support while you're not working. Now, at some point, you may have to ask that magical question. Should you consider applying for Social Security Disability? And it's interesting to note that in some situations, your long-term disability carrier or short-term disability carrier may require you to actually apply for it as well if it's determined that you got a condition that's, out that's going to keep you out of work for 12 months or longer. Now, one of the things that I like about long-term and short-term disability is that in some instances, they sometimes will connect you with various providers within their systems to assist you in terms of getting the treatment that you need. And usually those doctors have to fill out medical source statement questionnaires now, for those of you who are like, what is that? A medical source statement questionnaire is usually a detailed form. It could be the one page, two page form completed by the carrier. I mean, excuse me, completed by the doctor and provided to the carrier about what your conditions are, how long you've been treated for those conditions, symptoms related to those conditions, and how, the, how those conditions would impact your ability to work. Because keep in mind, some long-term and short-term disability carriers, they do have certain requirements that they have in order to determine whether or not you're eligible. The great thing about it is that those same forms can be used when you're applying for disability. Now, you've probably heard me say in a few videos that just because someone else finds you disabled doesn't mean Social Security has to as well, and that is true. However, the nice thing about these forms is that these forms are detailed. These forms will give Social Security a good indication of your condition. And a lot of times these forms provide exactly the kind of information that they look for. A doctor indicating how long they've treated you, diagnosis of your condition, symptoms related to your conditions, and limitations associated with your conditions, and what medical records support those limitations. That is great. And in some instances, uh, since your long-term or your short-term disability carrier has additional records or medical records that they've received from the doctors, those records can be helpful to your Social Security disability claim. Now, I do tell people this. Be mindful if there's any language in your long-term or short-term disability plan that requires you to reimburse your long-term or short-term disability carrier if you are awarded disability benefits. Because a lot of times what happens is that people get this idea that I apply for Social Security, I'll get a lump sum of money, I'll get a lump sum of money and monthly benefits, and I'll get another additional money from my long-term disability carrier. Well, first of all, you want to see whether or not your carrier requires you to reimburse them back any money on Social Security. That's the first thing. The other thing you need to find out is whether your long-term or short-term disability carrier will discontinue your benefits once you've received Social Security. I tell you this because I don't want you to be in this weird situation where you're thinking that you're budgeting your household based on getting two pots of money, when in essence you may only get one. It may just be from the long-term disability or short-term disability or the Social Security Disability Program, whichever the case may be. 
I do tell people that whenever I've, because I get people all the time who come to me who are getting long-term or short-term disability, and I encourage them if they if they are asking whether or not that information should be provide, pro provided for their social security, I always tell them absolutely. Also, also here's another thing you need to keep in mind: if you stopped working, if you stopped working, and you decide to apply for social security, make sure you check because most people don't have a private short-term or long-term disability program that they've paid into like an app like or anything like that contact your employer because in some instances if you've left your employer um and you you know you stopped working because of your health and so forth and you didn't even know that you had it because sometimes let's be real when you're paying all this stuff when you first start with your employer you may not even realize you have long-term or short-term disability so when you leave the employer or you're thinking about leaving ask them if they have a long-term or short-term disability pro program because if they do, that could be something that could help you. Trust me, I, I'm in the business of trying to do what I can to help you make your Social Security disability case stronger. So hopefully, that added piece will help you out. But just be, be advised this, that if you're applying for long-term or short-term disability and you decide to apply for Social Security, check to see if you have to pay any money back to the carrier and check, check to see if the, if the money will stop once you get Social Security. And if you decide to stop working, and because of your medical impairments and you're thinking about applying for Social Security, make sure you contact your employer first to find out whether or not you qualify for a long-term or short-term disability. Even after you've stopped working, ask your, if you've got a Social Security attorney, ask them if you should look into that. Because in some instances, they could possibly connect you with a, a long-term or short-term disability attorney that could help you identify whether or not there should have been benefits you should have received for long-term and short-term disability that you didn't receive.